this is Adam. This is another Eye on North Carolina blog. We are here in Winston-Salem at Tattoo Archive. This is a really amazing place. They have a lot of history on tattoos and I am here with the owner Chuck Eldridge who's going to tell us more about this wonderful, wonderful place with so much artwork. Chuck, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, what was the inspiration behind Tattoo Archive? It originated in Berkeley, correct? Right, that's okay. correct. Yeah, for about 25 years I had a kind of a miniature version of this shop there. But basically, um, it just came about from my collecting. Um, the collection grew and grew and got to the point where I wanted to display some of the material to the public and do more writing and research on the history of tattoo. So it kind of evolved that way. Wow. Did you get inspired to even go in this direction? You know, when you were younger, you started getting tattoos, and you're like, you know what, I'd love to open up a shop. Well, you know, um, I always loved history in school, and then at 18, I started getting tattoos. So they kind of just kind of merged together. And then in the 70s, uh, I was getting tattooed in San Francisco, and the, the fellow that was tattooing me offered to teach me the art of tattooing. So I took him up on that. So that's how the actual tattoo shop aspect of it grew. Cool, really cool. And I, I see this, this picture here uh, kind of describe the inspiration and uh, the history behind it. Well, this is probably one of the oldest pieces in the shop. It's from the 1800s. Uh, and it depicts a period in shipbuilding where the steam engine had come along, but the engine was unreliable, so they continued to build the ships with the sail rigging as well. Um, so it was a kind of an odd period in American shipbuilding. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful piece. This was designed for something like a chest or a back or something like that. Tattooing is tradition bound, so it's probably more by tradition it's hard that the, the tattooers don't want to give these designs up so they would just redraw it with a new ship. Uh, but sometimes it was just required. Uh, tattooing is a service business, so these sailors would come in after this period and see this as an antiquated design and want their ship put in there. Well, um, here we see what we in the tattoo business consider Norman Rockwell's masterpiece. Um, the tattooist, sometimes referred to as the tattoo artist, it actually has a double name. Um, this was a Saturday evening post cover from March the 4th, 1944. And um, as with many of Rockwell's, especially the Saturday evening post covers, there was always a little bit of humor injected into the painting as well. Here the sailor has got a whole list <laughs> of women's names from all over the world that have been crossed out. And he's getting his new Sweeney's name Betty. tattooed on the very bottom of that list. Um, and he doesn't look too happy. He's like, oh gosh, another one on he, there. Yeah, <laughs> he looks a little bit skeptical. He's, he maybe has a little question about the competence of the tattooer. Uh, uh, but he definitely has an interesting look on his face. But um, This painting, at the moment, is on display at the Renola House in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I did see that. Yeah, yeah it's huge. It's part yeah. of a um, larger exhibit called American Masters, um, including O'Keeffe's and Redfield Marshes and uh, several other paintings. I mean, there must be 40 or 50 paintings in the show. But uh, to the tattoo world, of course, this is a, a major treat. Um, in 40 years around the tattoo world, I've got a chance to see this twice. So it's really a, a rare opportunity to uh, see it. Um, I would invite all those folks to come and check that out. And it's very special, for, I'm sure, for you to Yeah, see it's it. very special. Yeah. I've actually written about this and uh, lectured on this painting for, for probably 25 or 30 years. Wow. Um, Rockwell had a really interesting way of doing his paintings. If we step over a little bit, we can go through this a little bit. Rockwell worked from photographs. And I think you can see that this photograph was kind of the, the beginning idea of how he was going to construct this painting. He had a vision, and so he posed uh, Meade Schaefer, who is the tattooer here, and Clarence Decker, who is the sailor. And these were his friends and neighbors. And he would bring his friends and neighbors into these photographs. Uh, and he would do really elaborate staging sometimes on these photographs uh, and then work from the photographs. He would have a vision and so he would stage these 
as how he wanted the painting to look. And you can see over here, this is a charcoal version of the painting. You can see he exaggerated that even a little bit further so that he got more room on the arm for the names. So those are the kind of changes he would make when he actually would get to literally doing the paintings. These charcoal stages were always actual size and it was just part of the preparation of uh, assembling this and basically laying out that. And then from there, he would do a watercolor of the painting. Mm -hmm. And you can see he's beginning to add some detail and stuff in here. Uh, this is a, a sign, a window sign from a tattooer in the Bowery in New York City that actually befriended Rockwell and let him photograph the designs, loaned him a tattoo machine, which you can see here. He's actually holding an authentic tattoo machine. So that Rockwell got the detail correct. So Rockwell would go out of his way to do this kind of research. Um, I mean, he did over 300 and some covers for Seven Mile High Post. And I, and I suspect that every one of those paintings has a backstory like this one has. I mean, we, I only know this one because I've done all this research on it, but um, Rockwell was very specific about that kind of stuff. Uh, a big part of the tattoo archive is the bookstore. Um, these books were assembled by the book mistress. Um, Harriet Cohen, my lovely wife. <laughs> and, um, she has a mail order business where we sell these around the world. Um, and it's a, a rare chance to have them on display in the shop as well. It adds certainly a, a whole uh, another feeling to the kind of the academic aspect of the museum. Um, one of my favorite things in going to museums is always the bookstore. Uh, sometimes I'll hit the bookstore first and load myself up with books <laughs> before I even go and see the exhibits. And I'll ask the clerk, I said, oh, can I leave these books here while I go and <laughs> look around? The books are kind of, you know, all over the map. I mean, these are a few of the books that, that we've written here, some of our publications. There's a tremendous explosion in the publication of books, art books, history books, um, all kinds of design books, um, you can kind of name it. It's really, uh, it's an exciting period um, to be in, in the tattoo world, especially as far as uh, publication of books go. Come out. Hey. come here, bud. You ready to be on field? Come on. Go. Go. Hey, look at this guy. A, ra a rare chance for him to get into uh, the tattoo shop. He likes the carpet parts. How sit. old is he? Sit. Twelve. Twelve. Right, sit. So, um, in 1891, an Irish immigrant named Samuel O'Reilly was issued this patent for a tattooing machine. This was the first one that was issued. Um, it was a modification of a Thomas Edison design. Wow. Um, Edison had designed this, what he called a stencil pen, to help office secretaries duplicate letters. Uh, this Irish immigrant saw this machine and realized that with a simple modification on the tube here, he could actually turn this into a device that was used for tattooing. Twin coils, creating a magnetic field, which would then spin a wheel in this instance, which would, was on a cam, which would then move the armature or the needle bar up and down, and that's what would pierce the skin for the tattooing. Then, the machine, like I said, went through several evolutions, and then we come into some of these machines. This is a poster that was done by Lyle Tuttle, who um, has a tattoo shop in um, San Francisco. And these are various, he calls them 12 classic tattoo machines, and they're basically the same machine, much like an automobile is the same kind of car, but just has a different body on it and different styling and different shapes. The piece there, the uh, Ye Old Tickle Shop, is a piece by a fellow named Ralph Johnstone, who was a famous circus banner painter and tattooist. Um, and he had uh, quite an interesting style. Um, this is really kind of some of his cartoon work um, of the cat chasing the mice. Um, and 
This original painting is owned by a fellow in Kentucky and he did prints of this uh, that he sold. A pie, I don't know if you can get a shot of the, the painted window that says visit our museum. <laughs> I that, like that. That's from Lyle Tuttle's museum in San Francisco, which was uh, really the first museum in North America for tattooing. Wow. Uh, he opened there in I think like the 60s. And, um, Great era to open up a tattoo shop. Yes, it was, um, especially in San Francisco. Yes. Um, the music scene was booming there, the hippie scene. Um, so that, that was a, a good period. Lyle was there up till in that same location till 89 when the San Francisco earthquake hit during right. the World Series and the building that he was in then kind of cracked open from the earthquake and so he had to move from there. But it was a great museum. Um, there is another piece of his from, there's actually another window with the flower design. And then there was this piece here that actually hung in uh, the shop as well from Lyle's collection. I'd like to thank Chuck for inviting us out at the Tattoo Archive. This place is great for any tattoo enthusiast or someone looking to get a tattoo. This is definitely the place to go here in Winston-Salem. And thank you, Chuck. I really appreciate it. You have, you have a pleasure. Another, thank you, and you have a very great place here. It's amazing. And uh, this is another I Am North Carolina blog. We're here in Winston-Salem at the Tattoo Archive, and we'll see you all soon.